Good evening, everyone. Please confirm if I'm audible to call you. Good evening, sir. Yes, you're audible. All right. Thank you so much. It's a minute. <clears throat> All right, everyone. So in the last class, you were talking about this question, question number one thirty six. Uh, I think we. Have in this question we already prepared the revaluation account, right? This question in this question we were required to prepare the revaluation account, the capital account, and the balance sheet, right, everyone? Uh, yes. If I'm not wrong, I think we already completed revaluation account and the capital account, and I have given you the for uh, the balance sheet for your homework, right? Yes, sir. Have you guys tried for being balance sheet for this question? <clears throat> Sir, I wasn't able to do it. You wasn't able to do it. All right, no issues. Uh, what about everyone else? What about Heba, Ayan, Abin? You guys tried forming the balance sheet for this question? No. Sir. No. No. All right then. So let let me prepare the balance sheet for this question. You must have the revaluation account and capital account prepared in, for this question, na? You have you you already made the revaluation account, the capital account. Both the accounts is there in your notebook? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right then. So let's let's start with the formation of the balance sheet for this question. Uh, Balance. We will quickly finish this question and then we will start a new question. But since it is still pending, so we will first of all complete this question. So this is the format of the balance sheet. Now see, uh, first of all, in the balance sheet, we need to so in the current the old balance sheet, we have cash at bank on the on the asset side. Everyone is able to see that cash at bank five seven five zero, right? Five seven yes. five zero. But out of it, we have already see the, in adjustment G. Uh, question requires us to pay five thousand sixty-seven rupees to Z in the settlement of their uh, balance. You're able to recall that 
we uh, we have paid five thousand sixty seven rupees out of the cash, right? So that means this is going to reduce the amount of cash available in the business, right? Is that clear, everyone? Out of yes, sir. see, this is the five. Uh, the we have cash balance of five fifty seven fifty, and we have paid five thousand sixty seven rupees to the uh, to Z in the settlement of his account. So therefore, we'll go to the balance sheet. And write down cash at bank. Previous balance was fifty seven five zero minus five zero six seven five zero six seven that we have paid to Z in settlement of his account. So the closing balance, closing cash balance will be six thousand. Thirty six hundred and eighty three rupees. Right, everyone. Five seven five zero minus five zero six seven. We will get six eight three as the closing balance. Is it clear, all of you? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Then, uh, looking at the other items on the asset side, we have debtors. Debtors were forty thousand. We have made a provision of. Two thousand, but the question requires us to make a provision for at six percent, right? You are able to recall that as well. We were required to prepare the, uh, the provision for doubtful debt at six percent. That means that means forty thousand into six percent is twenty four hundred. So instead of two thousand, we need to subtract how much twenty four hundred. Right. So coming back to the balance sheet again, and we'll write that. Write down debtors. Debtors earlier it was at forty thousand, but we will reduce provision. Let's provisions for for doubtful debt twenty four hundred. So after subtracting twenty four hundred out of it. Remaining amount will be forty thousand minus twenty four hundred. This will be three seven six double zero. Three seven six double zero. Is that clear? Three seven six. Got it, everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. Now the next item is stock. The stock was there was no change in the value of the stock. There was no adjustment relating to the stock, as you can see. From A to Z, there is no adjustment that talks about the stock. So that means stock will be valued at same price. Therefore, it will be recorded at at the at thirty thousand only. So stock thirty thousand. It will remain at thirty thousand. Moving on to the next point. Next, we have on the asset side, we have patents. Patent. The value of patent was ten thousand. But if you are able to recall that there is reduction in the value of the patent as well, right? Patent reduced by twenty percent. So that means the the new value for the patent will be ten thousand minus twenty percent. That means ten thousand minus two thousand. Is it clear as well? Yes, sir. Then the value of machinery was also there. Machinery. The value of the machine was. Value of the machine was fifty thousand, and in the adjustment B, it says that value of the machinery will be well machinery will be valued at ninety percent only. So the ninety. Percent of fifty thousand is what forty five thousand, right? So machinery will be valued at forty five thousand, right? Everyone, is it clear to all of you? Yes, sir. Then 
next item next is on the asset side we have goodwill we already distributed goodwill among the partners right it is already written off and the loss has been carried forward to the partners and advertisement expenditure is also a loss it is also treated already treated so this is written off and this has because it is a loss so the loss has to be transferred to the partners capital account we already did that so no uh, these these items will not appear in the new balance sheet is it is it clear everyone yes sir yes okay. sir coming to the liability side of the balance sheet we have the first item we have is creditor now see i think there was some adjustment regarding the, regarding the creditor as well in the adjustment as you can see creditor just a minute let me check yeah a liability of 4000 included in creditor is not to be paid that means the overall liability toward creditor reduced by 4000 so the new creditor the value of the creditor will be creditors equals to earlier it was 21000 now we will reduce 4000 out of it and the remaining amount will be the value of the creditor 17000 got it all of you yes sir all right coming back to the balance sheet like the part again workman compensation workman compensation is already already treated na we already treated this workman compensation reserve has been transferred to the partners after after adjusting adjusting it toward the claim right claim was claim was uh, 750 rupees and we have subtracted 750 out of 12000 and the remaining 11250 was already distributed in the partners capital account then investment fluctuation reserve is also treated right it is also treated and the the capital fluctuation reserve has already been transferred to the partners capital account so we are not required to show these item in the new balance sheet at all right is that clear everybody sir uh, the claimed amount should be written no yeah we will be writing that but we we won't be writing workman compensation reserve at all right that is what i'm telling you okay so however we will record the workman compensation claim Let me write that workman compensation claim because it is a liability. So workman compensation claim will be recorded, and the value of it will be seven hundred and fifty. Right? Yes. Sir. Okay. This is it, and then we need to write down the capital account balance of the partner. So just tell me the capital account balance of the partner that we. Just calculated after preparing the partners capital account. Tell me the capital account balance of all the partners for X and Y. Tell me, tell me that. What was the closing capital balance of the partners? Sir, we didn't write the closing capital. We didn't calculate the closing capital. No, I think we. All right, just do it. Then, ah, uh, you know how to find out the closing capital of all the partners, na? Huh? All you need to do, so see, for for X partner X, you need to total the credit side of the partner X, and then you need to subtract all the items from the all the values of the debit side. So when you will do that, ah, uh, on the credit side, you can see we have opening balance of the partner X sixty eight thousand, right? Is that clear? Yes. Yes. Opening sir. capital is sixty-eight thousand. Just a minute. Let me open my calculator. Just a minute. Okay. So sixty-eight thousand. Then we will add investment fluctuation reserve plus three thousand. Plus three thousand, right? And then workman compensation reserve five six two five five six two five. Is that right? This is it on the debit side. On the credit side, we have only these value for part for partner X. On the on the credit side, four hundred. My uh, there is four hundred 
for the revaluation account loss. Then goodwill three thousand. Then advertisement expense two six two five. And then to Z Capital three four eight zero. So that means the closing capital of partner X is six seven one two zero. Got it, everybody? Closing capital balance of partner X is six seven one two zero. Alexander, is that clear to you? Yes, sir. Clear. Six seven one two zero. And same will be done for partner Y. So first of all, we will total the debit side of the Y's capital account. Sorry, credit side of the partner uh, Y capital account. So on the credit side, you can see opening balance of partner Y is thirty-two thousand. Is that right? Tell me the yes, credit sir. side value for for Y. Thirty-two thousand plus. Ah, uh, three thousand. Sorry. Three thousand or two thousand. No, three seven three thousand seven fifty. Okay, three seven five zero seven hundred fifty plus two thousand. Then two thousand. Okay, then uh, we will subtract the debit side value out of it. So on the debit side, you can clearly see in the Y capital account we have two six seven. We will subtract two sixty seven. Then we will subtract two thousand more. Then one seven five zero. And then two three two zero, right, everyone? Yes. Yes. Sir. yes. So that means the closing balance for Y is three one four one three. Three one four one three. Please write this in the partner's capital account as well. Three one four one three. Write these value in the partner's capital account as well as the closing balance of the partner as two balance CD. Now we will tell. Total both uh, these value six seven one two zero. So it will be nine eight five three three nine eight five three three. Right. This is it. Now there is one more thing. If you are able to recall, we have at the at the time of settling the account of Z. We issued a bill of uh, bills payable to to Z. Were able to recall that? See, uh, in the point D, it says that in order to settle the Z's account, we need to pay five zero six seven in cash, and of the balance amount, fifty percent is to be paid in one year. So this has been treated as a loan, and the remaining fifty percent of the balance. Is to be paid by a draft. That means we have issued a bills payable for this. You able to recall that? Yes, sir. Okay. So that means both these both these items are liability now. So we will be showing it in the in the balance sheet as well. So we'll write it here. We'll first of all write down bills payable that we have issued to Z in order to settle his account. So bills payable is a liability. We have issued a bills payable of rupees how much? I think twenty five hundred, I guess, right? Yes, sir. And uh, for the same amount, we have raised a loan. So that's loan account will also be open. That's loan account. Twenty four, twenty five hundred. I think these are all items that you need to be recover on the credit side. After writing all these, you need to total both the side asset and the liability side. Sorry. The blackboard is not visible. board is not that question is it now yes sir now yes all right so now all we need to do is just total the asset side and the liability side and hope that both the sides tally if both side does not tally that means we have made some mistake somewhere so let me just first of all total the asset side wait for me to finish once both the sides are tally then only write down the Final value. Let me just total it. Six eighty three plus three seven six double zero plus thirty thousand plus eight thousand plus forty five thousand. So some total of it is one two one two eight three. One two one two three. 
That means one lakh twenty one thousand two hundred and eighty. Okay, and totaling the liability side, seventeen thousand plus seven fifty plus nine eight five double three plus twenty five hundred plus twenty five hundred. It's we are getting the same balance on both the sides, so that means we did everything correct. One, two, one, two, eight, two. Please note this now. Yes, sir. Completed. Done, everyone. Yes. Done. Okay. All right. So let's start with the new question. So after this, after question number one forty nine, the next question is one forty. Uh, but uh, we will skip this question for now. We'll come back to it after solving a small question. So we'll uh, before doing one forty. I just want everyone to solve this question. One hundred and forty-one. We will do one forty-one, then one forty-two, and then we'll go back to question number one forty. Then you will find that question easier, and you will be able to do that on your own as well. So let's let's start with question number one forty-one. It says that X, Y, and Z are partners sharing profit in the uh, in the ratio of five to three to seven. X is retiring. Right, X retired from the firm. Y and Z decided to share the future profit in the ratio of two to three. This is their new profit sharing ratio. The adjusted capital account of Y and Z showed balance of four nine five double zero and one lakh five thousand seven fifty. Now, what do you mean by adjusted capital? What is adjusted capital? Adjusted capital. Can be considered as the closing balance of the partner's capital account, right, everyone? This is the closing balance of the partner's capital account. See, this is how we calculate the adjusted capital. Let me let me make it more clear. See, when you prepare the partner's capital account, when you prepare partner's capital account. Let's suppose that there are three partners X, Y, and Z, and X, Y, and Z. This is how we prepare the partners' capital account, right? This particular. This is. Particulars. See, after recording all the items in the partners' capital account, at the end, what do they do? We, we, uh, total the credit side values, right? We total these credit side values, and then we subtract the debit side values out of it, right? We subtract the debit side value, and at the end, the by the balance that we get, balance that we get here, this is considered as the adjusted capital. This is the adjusted capital. Got it, everyone. See, after subtracting the, after subtracting the debit side value, of the out of the capital side, uh, credit side value, credit side total value, 
minus the debit side value, the balance amount that you will get, this balancing figure, the remaining amount, which is called the adjusted capital. Adjusted capital. If nothing is nothing is given in the question, then this adjusted capital is the closing capital as well. This adjusted capital is treated as the closing capital as well. If question does not tell you any anything, any other thing. So whatever the balance that we get, mostly most of the time we write down these balances as the closing balance of the partner. But but this is what this is the adjusted capital. Now, is it possible that the adjusted capital and the closing capital can be different? Yes, this could be possible. Adjusted capital and closing capital can be different depending upon the question. If question requires us to calculate the closing capital in some other manner, then closing capital and adjusted capital can be different. Mostly, the, uh, the question that we have discussed until now, in all these questions, our adjusted capital is itself the closing capital. But question may provide other kind of situation wherein closing capital can be different, can be different than the adjusted capital. Got it? So whenever, whenever question is telling you that we have the certain amount of adjusted cap capital, that adjusted capital basically means, adjusted capital means the balance that we get after subtracting the debit side values out of the credit side value. I hope it is clear to everyone. Yes, yes sir. Tell me everyone else, Heba, Mariam, Abin, is it clear to all of you? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So adjusted capital is the difference between the credit side and debit side values. Okay, coming back to the question. The question is saying that the closing, uh, the adjusted capital of all the partners, both the partners is 4950 and 105750. Total amount need to be paid since c x is retiring now so when x is retiring x is required to be paid when he will go out of the firm he will he is required to be paid so at the end it has been decided that x will be paid 135750 right now the question arises who is going to pay mr mr x since mr x is retiring then who is going to pay him Obviously, Y and Z collectively will, collectively will pay 1,35,750 to Mr. X. Question further says that this amount is to be paid by Y and Z in a manner that their capital becomes proportionate to their new profit sharing ratio. It, that this means we need to uh, basically calculate the closing capital of the partners. We need to calculate the closing capital of the partner, keeping in mind that their closing capital must be in the ratio of their profit sharing, in, the, in, the, in their profit sharing ratio. That means their new capital should be in their profit sharing ratio. Let me simplify this question a little more. See. What question is given us? Given in the question, the new profit sharing ratio, which is relevant for us, this is given in the question. New profit sharing ratio is 2 is to 3. All right. Adjusted capital of the partners is also given. Adjusted capital for buy and Z is given. And apart from the adjusted capital, uh, let me also write down the values. Uh, adjusted capital for partner wise 49500 and for Z it is 1,5750. 1 lakh 5,000. Then question is telling us that uh, X required to be paid. X required to be paid how much? Since he is retiring partner, then he is required to be paid 1,35,750. 1,35,750. Right? And at the end, question is telling us to maintain the capital of the new partner, capital of the remaining partner. Capital must be maintained in their new profit sharing ratio. Maintained in their 
new profit sharing ratio. What is the new profit sharing ratio? That is two is to three. The 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 new capital new capital need to be maintained in their new profit sharing ratio. All right. So this is what question is telling us. Let me show you how this question will be solved. First of all, first of all, we will calculate the total capital of the firm. Everyone, don't write anything. Just try to understand. Since the next question will be very much similar to this, you will be able to. Then you will solve it. Solve that question on your own. You will be able to understand it in a better manner. But for the time being, just pay attention. Try to understand it. First of all, we will calculate the total capital of the firm. Right? Total capital of the firm. Total capital of the firm. Will be for X, Y, and uh, including the amount that we have to pay to Z. So first of all, the existed capital of the Mr. X is existed capital for X is one three five seven five zero. One three five seven five zero. This is what we are required to pay X as well. So this is the adjusted capital. This must be adjusted capital of X. For Y, question is telling us the adjusted capital of Y is four nine five double three. Right, and for Z, it is one lakh five thousand seven hundred and fifty. So we will total all these values. Total adjusted capital of the firm will be. Let me just write this. Write it like this. Total adjusted capital. Total adjusted capital of firm, including retiring part. Why we are including that? Because a. Uh, Ultimately, this has to be contributed by the existing partner, so we are therefore including this as well. So, to total adjusted capital of the firm will be one three one three five seven five zero plus four nine five double zero plus one zero five seven five zero. So, this will give us two lakh ninety one thousand. Two lakh ninety one. Two lakh ninety one. Two lakh ninety one thousand. Right. Then, <clears throat> then question. Uh, question. How? How? Question. Want us to maintain the new capital balance? This is the total existing capital, na? And question requires that new partner, uh, the existing partner, should maintain their capital in the new profit sharing ratio. Now, this two lakh ninety one thousand. Need to be distributed in such a manner that sorry in a manner in 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 their profit sharing ratio sorry two lakh ninety one thousand should be allocated in their profit sharing ratio so let's do that so if we divide this two lakh ninety thousand in the in their capital ratio so that means why is new capital why is new capital will be why is Y will have to maintain new capital balance at two lakh ninety one thousand. Pay attention, try to understand. Two lakh ninety one thousand. This is the total adjusted capital of the firm, and out of this, Y have to maintain. Let me check the ratio. Ratio was uh, two is to three. Yeah. So that means two by five. Two by have to be contributed by Y. So this will give us two lakh ninety one thousand into two divided by five. This will be one lakh sixteen thousand four hundred. One lakh sixteen thousand four hundred. Right. This is the new capital of Y. Similarly, we will calculate the new capital of Z. Z's new capital will be. 
Z's new capital will be two lakh ninety one thousand into three by five. So their new capital will be his new capital will be two lakh ninety one thousand into three upon five. This will give us one lakh seventy four thousand six hundred one seventy four thousand six hundred. So this is their new capital balance. Got it, everyone? This is the new capital balance of Y and Z. Now the question also tells us, uh, ask us to calculate, calculate the amount to be brought in or to be paid to partners. See, Y have to maintain the balance of one lakh sixteen thousand four hundred. Is that right? And Z will have to maintain a cap, uh, new capital balance of one seventy four thousand six hundred. Now, see, tell me what what is their closing capital right now? Closing capital of Y is how much? Y still have forty nine thousand five hundred in the form, na? And Z already have one lakh five thousand seven fifty in the form itself. Now, the remaining amount need to be contributed by the Y and Z. See, amount need to be contributed by Y. Amount required to brought in by how much amount X will have to brought in? See by by's capital new capital is. One lakh sixteen thousand four hundred, and we will subtract it. It just subtract his adjusted cap minus adjusted capital. His adjusted capital was forty nine thousand four hundred, forty nine thousand five hundred, right? Forty nine thousand five hundred. That means I will have to bring in remaining amount. One lakh since he have to maintain a balance of one lakh sixteen thousand four hundred, na. So that in already he already have forty nine thousand five hundred in the in the form, but for the remaining amount he will have to brought in from his personal account. So the amount that he will have to contribute is sixty six thousand nine hundred. Sixty six thousand nine hundred. Got it? Is this clear, everyone? Is it clear? Yes, sir. And same will be done for Z as well. For in order to determine determine how much Z will have to brought in, for that purpose also we will subtract the adjusted capital out of the new capital. The adjusted uh, new capital for Z was one seven four six double zero. One seven four six double zero, and his adjusted capital was. That means he already have one lakh five thousand seven fifty in the form. One zero five seven five zero. That means the remaining the the difference amount need to be contributed by side only. One seven four six double zero minus one zero five seven five zero. So the remaining amount that he will have to bring in. That's sixty-eight thousand eight hundred. Tell me, everyone, is this clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, please. sir. It's clear. It's clear. Okay. Let me give you a quick recap, explaining this all again. The first of all, we need to determine the total adjusted capital of the firm, including the retiring. Partners adjusted capital, or the uh, including the amount that uh, retiring partner to be paid. We have to pay retiring partner one lakh thirty five thousand seven fifty. Na, so we will add this amount and then we will calculate the total adjusted capital of the firm. So in this case, as per our question, the adjusted capital we got including X Y and Z capital is two lakh ninety one thousand. Then. Since this is the total capital of the firm, total adjusted capital of the firm, and this need to be uh, 
the new the existing partner need to maintain their capital in the profit sharing ratio that means the total existing capital need to be distributed among the partners in the in their psr and this is how we will be able to determine new capital balance for the y and z so for that purpose we have multiplied 291000 by 2 by 5 and then for z it is 291000 3 by 5 we got 116400 and 174600 this means that the new capital balance for y and z is uh, these uh, these values and now to determine how much more y and z is required to brought in the business for that purpose we will subtract adjusted capital out of the new capital and this is how we will get 696900 For Y and Z, sixty-eight, eight five. Right, everyone. I hope I hope this is clear to all of you. Yes. Yes. All right. So please please note this down quickly, and I'll give you one question for you to solve. But first of all, note this quickly, and tell me if anyone is having any doubt, any problem understanding it. Uh, total adjusted capital you calculated by adding the capitals of both three partners, right? X Y. Yeah, so. of all the partners, including the outgoing, the, the uh, retiring part. Okay. Why did I do that? Because see, uh, Y and Z not only have to maintain their closing capital as well as they will have to pay. X Y and Z X one thirty five seven fifty. So that means Y and Z will have to bring in necessary amount of cash to compensate X as well, na. So therefore, we have added one three five seven five zero that we need to pay to X. And after adding that, we have calculated total interest capital of the firm. And then accordingly, we found out the total uh, balance, total capital balance that Y and Z will have to maintain. And we calculated only the Y's and Z's uh, new capital. Why? Because because X is retiring now, so we are not required to find out the X new capital. Okay, so only we have to find uh, the remaining uh, remaining partners, remaining partners closing also. capital. Yes, because one partner is retiring. Yes. Sir, next question will be the similar to this. Yes, not completely, but it will be same. Then, everyone, anyone still writing? Shall I scroll down?
Done, all of you? Done, sir. Yes, sir, done. Okay. <clears throat> yes, okay. So we'll start with 142. See, X, Y, and Z are partners sharing the profits and the ratio of 5 is to 3 is to 2. So this is the old PSR. Y is retiring on 1st of April 2019 from the firm on which date X, Y, and Z after all adjustment, their capital balances are 103680878402688. So these are the adjusted capital of the partners. Respectively, cash and bank balance on that date is 9600. Okay. Why is to be paid through amount brought in by X, Y, and Z in such a way as to make their capital proportionate to their new profit sharing ratio, which will be 3 by 5 and 2 by 5. So this is in this ratio, the new partners, uh, the, uh, the uh, remaining partners have to share their, uh, sorry, basically have to maintain their capital balances in the ratio of 3 by 5 and 2 by 5. Yeah. Yeah, please. Calculate the amount to be paid or to be brought to brought in by the continuing partner, assuming that minimum cash and bank balance needs to maintain at 7200. So this is a new point in this question. Every other thing is almost same. The only thing in this case, in this uh, question is that, the new thing is that uh, we already have a cash balance of 9600. Question is all, question is requiring us to maintain a cash balance of 7200 only. 7200 only, right? So that means we have access amount of cash available with us. Just a minute, let me show you. Uh, 9600 is the current cash cash and bank balance, right? But question is required, requiring us to maintain a cash balance of rupees 7200 only. That means we have how much extra cash available? 2400, right? Right, everyone? So this this need to be subtracted at the time of calculating the total adjusted capital of the partners. All right. In order to calculate the total adjusted capital of the partner, we will subtract 2,400. And then whatever the balance we will get, we will divide that balance among the partners in the, in the profit sharing ratio. Do you want to try or? Yes, sir. Shall I do this question for you? Sir, can you do You want me to do this? Aben, Ayan, Eba. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry, if it is similar, we will try to do it. Uh, yeah, it, it, this is not completely similar. Yeah, this completely similar. We will try to. No problem. Just a minute. So as usual, we'll first of all calculate the total existed capital. Total existed capital of the firm, including the capital of the retiring partner. So we have how many partners are there? X, Y, and Z was there. No? So X. Five and say uh, one zero three six eight zero one zero three six eight zero plus why the district capital was eight seven eight four zero plus for Z, it was 26880. Right now, we can total this and we will be able to determine the total 
जिस में कैपिटल लगता हूँ तो वन जीरो थ्री सिक्स एट जीरो प्लस एट सेवन एट फोर जीरो प्लस टू सिक्स एट एट जीरो तो तो टोटल अमाउंट है टू लैक एटीन थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड टू लैक एटीन थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड राइट एवरीवन दिस नीड तू बी दिस जी सी दिस इज़ दी टोटल कैपिटल ऑफ़ दी फॉर्म and this need to be shared between x and y in their capital ratio sorry in their in their new property share ratio that means new partner will have to bring in to like 18400 right but see we already have some cash available with us right we already have some cash available we have 9600 of cash available out of which we only required 7200 That means this twenty four hundred is not required. If this is not required, we can use this amount to reduce the amount of capital that we have brought in by the part. We will simply subtract twenty four hundred out of two lakh eighteen thousand four hundred. So this is how we will. Do. Cash available. Ninety six hundred minus seventy two hundred. That means twenty four hundred is available with us, right? Is this clear? Twenty four hundred is still available with us. For twenty eight, after maintaining the minimum balance of seventy two hundred, twenty four hundred is available. So that means new partner have to bring in. Not new part, the existing part. Two lakh eighteen thousand four hundred minus twenty four hundred. So the remaining amount that needs to be brought in by the existing partner two lakh eighteen thousand four hundred minus twenty four hundred. That is two lakh sixteen thousand. This has to be contributed by the existing partner. And in what ratio they they will be contributing this capital in their profit sharing ratio. So now we will be able to determine the capital ratio of the sorry capital of the partners. Why for why is who are who is retiring? Let me check. Uh, why is retiring now? So that means X new capital will be X new capital equals to and Z new capital. Equal. How do we determine the capital balance of the partner? So it is very simple. Two lakh sixteen thousand need to be distributed among the, the partners ratio. in the not old ratio, the new profit sharing ratio. That is three by five and two by five. That is already given in the question. Three by five. So that means two lakh sixteen thousand into three by five. This will give us one lakh twenty nine thousand six hundred. One two nine six hundred and two lakh sixteen thousand into two by five. So this will be eighty six four hundred. What is this? Is the new capital for Y and X and Y? X and Z have to maintain this cap, this much capital balance. Got it, everyone? Is it clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Clear. Yes. Now the question arises: How much amount they will brought in in cash? So amount required to be brought in. Finally, let's calculate it. Amount required to brought in by X and Y, X and Z. 
x for x we will how do we determine the amount that he will have to brought in so it is very simple we will simply subtract the new capital sorry adjusted capital adjusted capital of x out of the new capital of x so x already have a closing capital adjusted capital of 103680 103680 and the new capital balance that he is required to maintain is 129600 129600 so when you will subtract it you will get 129600 minus 103680 so that means x will have to Contribute twenty five thousand nine hundred and twenty in cash. This has to be brought in by Mr. X. Okay, is that clear? And same will be done for Z. For Z also, we will calculate it like this: new capital minus the adjusted capital. This will be one new capital for X is eighty six four hundred, and adjusted capital for him was two six eight eight zero. Two six eight eight zero. So that means eight six four double zero. We already have closing capital, adjusted capital of eight eight two six eight eight zero. That means he will have to further contribute five nine five two zero. Five nine five. Is it clear, everybody? Yes. Yes. Sir. So the, there is only one small change in this question. That was about cash. So if we have already twenty four hundred available, that means we don't have to. Bring in twenty four hundred. So therefore, we have we subtracted twenty four hundred out of the adjusted capital. That means partner will have to only bring in two lakh sixteen thousand collectively in their profit sharing ratio, and they will maintain this as their as their uh, new capital balance. All right. I hope this point is clear. Please note this down quickly, and tell me once you are done. Done, everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so this is it, everyone. I'm not giving you any homework for the next class. Just do one thing: just revise both these questions that we did in today's class. Because in the next class, we'll do a full-fledged question, and you need to have 
a better understanding of these things that we discussed today. Otherwise, you won't be able to solve the question that we will be discussing in the next class. Let me show you. These questions will be discussed in the next class. We will discuss this question, question number 140. This is a lengthy question since it requires us to prepare the evaluation account, the capital account, balance sheet, everything. And uh, there is one more question, 143. So unless and until you understand these two questions that we did today, 41 and 42, you won't be able to complete the question that we will do tomorrow. So make sure you revise both these questions. Try to do it on your own once. This is the only homework for you. I'm not giving you any, any homework for the tomorrow's class. So this is it. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you in the next class. We'll do a few more questions based on the same concept. All right, now you can leave the session. Take care of that. Okay, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care.